Greetings and welcome to what I hope is a delightful new old stock-ish, at least unused in box thing here on LGR. Yeah, we've got an AST computer from late 1995, maybe early 96. One of their Advantage 600 series PCs. Yeah. In particular, it is the Advantage 622 model from late 1995, I believe. And these are the kind of specs I live for. Look at this stuff. 100 megahertz Pentium processor, eight megs of RAM, 850 meg hard drive, a three and a half inch, 1.44 meg floppy, a four speed CD-ROM, 16 bit audio of some kind. I don't know if it's integrated or if it's a dedicated card or what, we'll find out. Microphone and speakers and keyboard are included. Uh, mouse to the monitor was a separate purchase. PCI local bus video with a megabyte of memory. Ooh. And of course, Windows 95, this being a rather early 95 machine, plus a whole bunch of software bundled in here. One of the bigger selling points of these machines, really everybody who was trying to compete in the PC market back then were bundling things in increasing amounts. And while I'm not sure of the exact price of the 622 model here, I do know that the very similar 614 cost $1,899 in the fall of 1995. Really nothing ridiculous in terms of uh, high specs, high cost, or the very lowest end either. It's just kind of like a decent PC from the time. And the fact that it's still in the box is of course highly appealing. And you know, this is something that I just grabbed because an LGR viewer emailed me about this, uh, pointing out that this was listed on eBay as new in box, albeit opened by the seller to make sure everything was in there, I guess. But uh, yeah, the price was a bit high, so I made a lower best offer and well, they accepted, so here we are. And if you see the chapters below, you'll see we'll be opening this thing up and uh, and then opening it up. You know, I want to see on the inside too to make sure there's no corrosion or ghosts or anything inside. And then we'll get it set up and hopefully test it out if we're able to do that. And yeah, before that, I just want to go over a little bit of brief computer and company history here because the AST Advantage was a very popular line of computers for a while, uh, alongside the Bravo series that they sold back then, these are just being their primary desktops available as a uh, desktop form factor like this, or a tower, even a few all-in-one models. And these were sold through various authorized retailers and distributors like Insight, CDW, PCs Complete, and stores like Incredible Universe, Computer City, and many more, and eventually Radio Shack starting in 1994, which makes sense seeing as AST had acquired the computer manufacturing side of Radio Shack's parent company Tandy for $112 million in 1993. Around the same time, they also purchased Grid Systems. They were really on a roll in the early 90s and then it all came crashing down. But let's go back to the beginning really quick here because AST Computer, originally AST Research, was founded in 1980 in Irvine, California, so pretty early to the whole personal computer party. And they primarily sold expansion cards for IBM PCs and compatibles from 1981 to 86, with the AST six-pack multifunction cards being the most well-known product of theirs back then. And honestly, it probably still is, at least in my experience. But yeah, they were the third largest manufacturer behind only IBM and Compaq by 1988, and they held on to that for a good few years. In the early to mid 90s, they were pretty ubiquitous and they fought hard for PC market dominance, mainly against Compaq and IBM, but really against everyone, trying to undercut on prices and options and things like that, going tit for tat in the price war with Compaq, especially in the 486 era. Uh, but they just couldn't keep up with what Compaq was doing with their whole supply chain and everything else. And as a result, AST tried to do things like emphasizing workstations and laptops and 24-7 technical support and great software bundles, but yeah, the competition really bled them dry, quality control decreased, and things uh, kind of fell apart by the mid-90s. I mean, in 1995, when this Advantage 600 was built, they were still the fifth largest computer manufacturer in the world, but their revenue overall was hardly rising anymore, and their losses were in the hundreds of millions. They were really on a downward trend, and yeah, they sold out completely in 1997 to large company shareholder Samsung, 
who closed them down in 1999, with the AST trademark and IP being sold off to somebody else. So in a way, this Advantage 622 was really from AST's malaise era, I guess you could call it, where their PCs and the company itself were on a steady decline on all fronts, so uh, wow, I can't wait to dive in. I mean it, I really can't. You never know what you're gonna find in a package like this, especially supposedly unused for uh, all these years. So let's just go right for it. <laughs> Oh, I love these things. Yeah, these kinds of posters for getting it all set up. I remember my uh, Acer Aspire came with one of these in 1997 or something kind of like it. Congratulations, you're the proud owner of a new AST Advantage. Well, I sure hope so. Look at this road map. What a sleek looking rear end view we got going on there. First the monitor, then the modem, <laughs> then your phone, then the microphone, then the speaker. And the keyboard, the mouse, and then power. Okay. Hey, we got another. Oh, dude. There we go. The startup guide, too. So, once you get it all plugged in, we have a startup thing here. I hope that that's, that's still doable. That'd be awesome. If this really has never been powered on, we should be seeing this. All kinds of accessories. Mouse, a blank envelope. Guess that's if you need to send in what, the registration. Register now, a customer care program. Yeah, they are pretty well known for this. 24 seven, seven days a week. You could get help or at least talk to David Murray. Got some installation information about a few of the education on game CD-ROMs that came with it need to be installed first. Well, yeah. Another addendum includes a voice-capable modem. Your computer has two mic connections. Oh yeah, don't plug it into the wrong one. Modem has one, mic has one, I guess. Intriguingly, these do say 1996 on them, so perhaps this was uh, made just a little bit later than I thought. Everything I read seems to indicate 95, like late 1995. That's certainly feasible that it could be early 96. Just get everything out of here. All right, keyboard time. Well, that is a very generic looking keyboard, but <laughs> about what I'd expect. Oh yeah. Honestly, not the worst feel though to the fingers. Still uh, feels like rubber domes or, you know, not the worst. Huh. Well, look at that, we got some Little, little green domes going on there, but yes, yeah, just definitely a rubber dome membrane, but they got a nice spring to them. And honestly, I kind of, <laughs> I kind of like how cheap it feels. It reminds me of um, what Packard Bell was doing at the time. Oh, a lovely beige AC adapter for our speakers. Six volt, 400 milliamp, center negative. Oh, oh, these are classics, dude. I have not seen these in a long time. Labtech LCS 150s. Dude, I have a, a couple of Labtechs that are very close to this, but not this exact particular rounded cheapness. We got our, our base boost that does basically nothing. I mean, it tries. Uh, we do have a real volume knob. Our cables are just packed in there, and yeah, these are those you can just run off of batteries or plug straight into the wall. Or don't do anything. You plug them into the speaker, the headphone output with the amplification on your sound card, they'll work just fine. I gotta say, I'm kind of disappointed it doesn't come with those. I was really hoping for uh, that style of lab tech speaker. I've never seen or had those before. It's just a different look to them. Rodent time. Oh, this kind of looks used. Look at that, we got some uh, finger grime there. It's kind of what that looks like, doesn't it? Yeah, and some dirt on the bottom. It's definitely been used, so. Maybe the peripherals were used, maybe it was all used, and uh, the seller was just not telling the full truth. Anyway, yeah, standard Logitech mouse here. It's honestly fine. It's a pretty good little mouse. I've got a few of these. All right, so we got our 
phone line here for our modem. We will not be using that today. <laughs> and would you look at that. How many of you had a microphone that looked like this back in the day? I know just about everyone did that I knew from like 1993 to 98. All right, power cord. I got a thousand of these, so I'm not even gonna bother with this one. And finally, our package of software and goodies. Oh, I really hope that it's all in here. Ooh, looking promising so far. Oh, yeah, so glad these are in here, especially. We have our Restore Disk 4.0 and Data Disk 4.0, 1995 on these. We'll definitely be archiving these. These are combo software things. So we have <laughs> the Family Health Book Mayo Clinic. I remember we had a copy of that. What is a belly button? And some like edutainment looking stuff. Eco East Africa and, oh no, just the virtual simulation game Eco East Africa. It's just one thing on this one. All kinds of stuff in here. What is this paper? Oh, interesting. So this is a little addendum for those speakers instead of the ones that show is on the other printouts and stuff. So I guess they just replaced them at some point. That happened for sure. You need America online. Now, I sure did back then, 15 hours free in a month. Oh my goodness. Software is on your hard drive. Some more information about the, uh, the AC adapter is what it is. So many ads. I was afraid of learning software. And then I, and then I talked to this lady and a little screen on my screen and I'm not afraid anymore. Okay. More stuff. Uh, more addendums. Oh my goodness. Stop. Don't throw it away. CompuServe. Prodigy. Good grief. It just partnered with everyone. Just every single financial incentive to include all these all these things. <laughs> Lotus Smart Suite. All right, that's on here. Ooh, we got a, a disc. Hard disk restore. Okay. Uh, one year limited warranty certificate of authenticity for Windows 95. Yes. The little baby in the hologram. And last two, just some documentation for that Eco East Africa game something, educational something or other, and uh, Advantage 600 Series User's Manual, minus all the addendums. Like 1,500 addendums, but hey, most of this will be correct. Ah, yes. I was wondering how this might come apart, because that is our next thing, once we get the computer out. Well, that sure is pretty, it's in good shape, but it is not unused. As if the accessories didn't give it away, but uh, yeah, just you can see where our monitor stand was, was on there. That's where the feet were. Somebody would do that? Just go onto the internet and tell lies? I sure am glad I put in a best offer and didn't pay full price. I did get a pretty decent discount, so you know, still happy with it so far, because it really is like new condition, all things considered. I mean, it barely looks touched. If anything, I mean, it could have just been opened up and then never turned on. We still don't know yet. I guess kind of doesn't matter at this point because it's definitely been been handled before me. Oh no. Still looks great though. Very, very fresh. So uh, game port right there. Looks like a, a secondary serial port would be potentially there. We got our modem with the additional microphone. Your regular audio stuff with a little plug over this microphone. They really didn't want you plugging in the mic there. <laughs> Parallel, other serial, PS2 mouse and keyboard, VGA out. So this all appears to be integrated except for just this probably. And I, you know, that's a little breakout thing. So it's looking good. 325 watt AT power supply, I'm assuming. It's got the hard on off over there. Now at least that little tamper warranty sticker thing is Still very much on there. It doesn't look like that's been pulled off at all. Mm, so perhaps we can be the first person to go inside. Oh, neat. We got a uh, sticker on the bottom showing all of the specs. That's handy. Okay, let us get this sucker open. Make sure it's all good in there. I do not know what kind of battery this uses. There we go. Looking clean as expected. There's a date code right on the case, May 1st, 1996. So I guess that answers that. Machine was introduced at the end of 95, but this one was put together in 96. And check it out. 
lovely looking little thing inside. Kind of reminds me of uh, certain HP machines with the vector line. Here's a look at our power supply. AT indeed. Great to see a proper two inch cone speaker in there, not some little piezoelectric thingy. And uh, yeah, it's got one of those um, dual sided riser things in here. So we do have PCI in addition to 16 bit ISA. And so you have some cards this way, some cards going that way. And that's how they go in there. Just sort of crisscrossing back and forth. Got our cute little RAM modules in there. A rather substantial modem, a big old long ISA card. Oh, hey, and check this out. You see those empty sockets right there? Those are actually for expanding the video memory. So there's one megabyte for the SIS chipset on board. But if you have the right memory chips, you can double that to two megs. Pretty handy. And there we go. That's really the main thing I was hoping to check here. It was the battery. Just wanted to make sure it was something like that and not a leaky barrel. Yeah, so it looks like... Uh, in total, three 16-bit ISA and two PCI slots on the riser there. I'm assuming this is for a coast module for cash. What kind of motherboard is this? FM561. No kidding. <laughs> you know how I said it looked like an HP design? Uh, yeah, it's an FM561 by HP. I guess my first inkling was uh, correct. This really does look familiar, which means... Yeah, it's kind of a pretty decent little audio chip. That is an ESS audio drive, a 1788F. And you got a wavetable header there. And I've had good luck with these in terms of uh, like DOS compatibility and general Windows 95 decency. Let's take a look at this Pentium real quick. That thermal compound, you never, you never know. Oh, it's one of those that's basically adhered to the heat sink. Yeah, there we go. Delightful little socket five chip. I'm always iffy about taking these things off of this type of thing because they're just so stuck on there, almost cement-like. I'm gonna leave it on there for now. I just want to test it first, but we can definitely uh, take care of that thermal grease situation if we need to. <laughs> this is like pretty unnecessary. It's so stuck on there. Oof. All right, well, get all of our things plugged in here and power this sucker on see what we got going with this initial startup, or at least the initial startup for us. Okay, all set up and looking lovely. Uh, by the way, I did give it a brief cleaning just to get that tiny bit of grime off of there. There wasn't much, but you know, I did want it. I want my grime on there and that's it. So now it'll be my grime from here onward. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and see, see what we get. Ooh, hard disk. Yeah. All right. You know, I should have replaced that battery. Didn't even think about it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, CMOS battery's dead. Let's just see if it boots into Windows at all. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, let me get that, um, battery replaced real quick. I'm gonna go through the BIOS and make sure it's, um, uh, detecting the hard drive. And, uh, we'll go from there. Good start, though. Alrighty, so, BIOS battery issues are sorted. And we are now able to keep the time, as well as our settings and stuff. And yeah, that delightful hard disk, it automatically detected as soon as I got the BIOS going. It just has that automatic thing in there. Uh, eight megs of RAM tested and working. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've used a Windows 95 machine with just eight megs of RAM. I'll tell you that much. So anyway, since the hard disk uh, was showing up in the BIOS, I'm hoping it's all good. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, that went away quicker than I thought it would. There was a little custom AST logo. Oh, dude. Well, this is unique. Love that little custom AST cursor. <laughs> so home or office use or in-store display. You know, one-time choice only and not be returned to this screen. So 
either this really has not been used or it was just restored by the previous uh, owner who sold it to me and they just have the original media and got it back to this. Either way, we should have a factory original experience here. You know, looking back at that poster where uh, it shows the startup process, it does say that this is going to be the first thing you run into. So, uh, yeah, pretty authentic. Let's just do home office. Yes. Ooh. Hi, we're here on behalf of the people of AST to welcome you and get acquainted with your new computer. And it I took too long to read it. <laughs> I adjusted the camera and uh, it kind of makes me wonder if there's supposed to be sound there. I think the speakers are plugged into the correct thing. Oh, it's, it's actually going to ask for our certificate of authenticity. Let me find that. Anybody remember what the code was? Ah, here we go. Bit of a more lengthy loading process as I was anticipating. Love that AST Computer Presents logo up there. OEM splash screens, mmm. That hard disk is going to town. Wow. Hmm. Slightly customized setup process, of course. We got some different things it's adding for all the AST stuff and actually list AST Works 2 and spot registering and the other programs that came packed inside the box. Speaking of which, we got AST Works 2, which I believe is their Windows front end shell type of thing. Oh, finally. Been sitting here for 10 minutes. All right. Uh, let's you register. <laughs> That is what's up. <laughs> Just the most basic Windows 95. Wow, this is very clean, all things considered. They got rid of a lot of the extraneous icons you often get. And you just have AST registration. Oh, wait, nope, it's still, it's still going. And now you can start doing all those things you bought your computer for. Let's show you around a bit. A new era begins. Windows 95, a powerful new operating system has arrived. The new AST interface packs a world of computing power into one tiny bubble floating on your screen, anywhere you want. And to get a choice between it has changed from open Click to Click the lock. locking button again. All the quadrants open and close. Let's go ahead and lock the toolbar. Quickly below the toolbar is Ask you AST. You want to put your global. most important files there first. Finally, there are a set of buttons that provide Locking easy access. Well organized right. in there. Oh my goodness. We got this little spot. Uh, I, oh man, not a fan. I never like these little pop-up deals that are just like always there. Fresh Windows 95 experience here. 4.00.950. This is just straight up Windows 95 OG. We probably don't have any of the 3D screensavers. Nope. Although we do have Crossing MPEG. <laughs> what is that? Zing, I'm assuming it's crossing. Oh dear, whoa! Yep, yep. <laughs> it's trying. <laughs> okay, we have our uh, SIS chipset settings for graphics and stuff. Yeah, do not even let you choose the Windows options. You just have to do it through here. Oh, hey, we got some just, yeah, good, good settings. IRQ 5, DMA 1, 330, 388, 220 for all the I.O. settings for our ESS audio drive. That'll be great in DOS. Or if it comes with any cool wallpapers, that's a big old nope. No special wallpapers, at least in the Windows directory. So we'll just go with clouds, I guess. And one of the most enjoyable things of any OEM kind of setup like this is seeing what all is installed and goodness, there is a lot. <laughs> AST Extras, AST Works 2. Oh my, all the uh, all the early internet and online services. AOL CompuServe, of course, but Mosaic in a box. Got your internet browser there. Prodigy Online, Synchro Multimedia Connect, don't know what that is. Or AST Lifeline. Send me tech support or something. 
Oh, there's an oh, encyclopedia in here. I didn't know that. Lotus Smart Suite. We got our spot on startup. Pretty standard accessories other than a couple shortcuts added. Yeah, some different shortcuts for different things. Just dropped in here. It's already got QuickTime on there. And Hover. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Typically, you have to get this off of the Windows 95 CD-ROM yourself. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, the performance isn't amazing, but that's uh, to, to be expected. Completely. 8 megs of RAM. <laughs> 100 megahertz Pentium. Yeah. We hear our delightful MIDI music going there. Good example of that. Nice and bright sounding. <laughs> All right, well, let's hover. That's awesome. Nice that it's already copied to the hard drive. I don't think I've seen that on other fresh installs. Yeah, there is a lot on this drive. They have loaded this thing down. Volume one. Yeah, there's only 342 megs left. We do have our media folder populated. Uh, but let's go with um, Passport. Yeah, dude. I don't know. I've always found these, um, the way these sound chips render FM synth, it's fascinating. You know, it's it's not exactly like OPL 2 or 3, but it ain't bad either. I don't know. It's, it's appealing in its own way. Goodness, there's so many things on here. <laughs> and uh, if I were to use this for any length of time, I would be clearing stuff off of here. But obviously that's not the goal. I wanted to use this as it would have been in 1995-96. Okay, let's see here. What do we got in these AST Extras home inventory? What is that? It's exactly what it sounded like. I'm assuming most of these are going to be the same type of thing. Yeah, just not much going on there. Well, this is kind of cool. The area math card calculates square inches, square centimeters, square feet. Yeah, there we go. AST works too. Let's see what the heck we got here. What's getting started? Got a desktop tour. There's that greetings thing we already did. Mouse tips. Is that my hardware? <laughs> what? Chips. Fast processor. Lots of RAM. High performance video. Mass media. Large hard drive. Multimedia. Information not available. That is the most useless system information I've ever seen. Desktop tour. Let's see what this is. We got more talking people. When you click on the yes. button labeled tour, getting started will appear to close. Simply click on the button labeled getting started. Located on the Windows 95 desktop. <laughs> she looked down. <laughs> what? Oh my goodness, the multimedia age. You know, we're gonna include little tiny videos just because I was expecting more of like a, a tab works or even like Ace Desktop or Packard Bell Navigator type of thing. I, but nope. Let's see what this talk shop is. Mm. Oh, look at this. Blockbuster music. AST Lifeline's in here. 1 800 Flowers, Wells Fargo. Oh, man. I want to call and listen. <laughs> Take me back. Even had games? Frick. Ah, multiplayer battleship, dude. All right, we can't talk to anybody online, but we can at least test out our microphone here that seemingly everyone had. I know it's not great, but let's hear it anyway. This is a test to reveal just how awful this really is. This is a test to reveal just how awful this really is. Perfect. Wouldn't have it any other way. All right, what about some daggum fun and learning? Let's try this encyclopedia. I didn't see a CD-ROM for it, so I'm assuming it's just on the hard drive. <laughs> Guess not. Yeah, no CD. It didn't come with it. That's unfortunate. Yeah, there was just these four. And I did look through this restore disc just to make sure there was nothing unexpected on there, but nope, it's just what you would think. Data for restoring the system to factory freshness. So yeah, it's just these four CDs, nothing else in the box. May as well check out 
our optical drive and see if it's working. It opens somewhat slowly, but that's okay. Let's try this uh, data disk. Just a bunch of AV video files? Huh. It's important to keep your computer clean because dust and dirt can harm the electronics inside. Keeping your computer clean starts with a clean environment around your computer. So yeah, I guess this is just gonna be MPC means multimedia PC. Wow. The multimedia just delightful videos. PC Marketing Council sets the multimedia standards. The latest standard is MPC level. Well, I'll put that on the Internet Archive if you want to view those yourself. Okay, let's give uh, Eco East Africa a uh, look. <sighs> well, I think something's broken. Maybe it needs to be in 256 colors. Okay. Well, now we're seeing things. So, oh yeah, this looks more like a, a program. Let's see, what do we got here? We just click on places and go there. Hmm. I think that's a giraffe. It's really dark. Oh, it's 3 a.m. <laughs> what the heck? Interesting. I don't know what's going on with this. This is not what I expected exactly. Interesting. Is like a virtual tour of this park and like some kind of business management thing. <laughs> wow, this actually might be kind of interesting. Like, what the heck? Oh, it's getting lighter. This is kind of cool. I don't know what's going on, but oh, dude, I like this. <laughs> Just watching the virtual sunrise? Are you kidding? This is great. We can just like move around from block to block or whatever. But, uh, oh crap, I, I didn't mean to close it down. Well, I'm intrigued a lot by that. Yeah, it's like a first person park management ish. All right, and since it's our last disc, since I guess we just didn't get the other ones, family health book. And what is a belly button? I don't know. I've always wondered, so hopefully we'll learn. Yeah, mayonnaise clinic. Let's go, give me some dukes. Make me a sandwich. Yeah, I know you're not a doctor, it's fine. So yeah, this is different than uh, the one I would have messed around with back in the day. It would have been like 1997, probably. Whatever version that would have been. But yeah, same kind of stuff. It's just like one of those medical books or whatever. I remember, uh, you know, looking up some things. It's like, oh no, what, what happened? I feel a pain here. This is like WebMD before that was a thing. But you could also look Kidney up... Kidney stone lithotripsy oh. with bath. Yeah, this, this kind of stuff. Parent program. That's for grown-ups. Uh, let's see. The other thing, though, that's that's more for figuring out what these belly button things are. This CD-ROM software gives you a unique... Plus program unlock. Oh, my goodness. Locked off content on disk. So you've got the program here. It's... What is a belly button. Yeah, presumably all there. You call, pay, and get a... Wow. Bet you could crack that. <laughs> uh, that's fascinating. Here we go. Why do I get hungry? When you feel hungry or your stomach rumbles, your body is telling you it's time to eat. That guy sounds really familiar. So this is like an animated storybook, I guess. Your body is like a car. This is interesting, but it's still not telling me what a belly button is. I, I still don't know. <laughs> Learn about cars, though. Cereal is made from grain. Oh, uh, here, here we go. We got the interactive clickables. Fresh fruit has lots of vitamins. I was just gonna say vitamin C. That was a C scale. Anyway. There's my friend Kenny. <laughs> All right, Kenny done screwed up. What happens when you break a bone? Your bones are hard and strong. You end up like Kenny. But if you have a, a broken ball. A broken husk of a child. Well, that's enough screwing around. Time to install something of my own. All right, well, this is going to be interesting due to the very nature of this system's configuration. As admirably period correct for early 96 as it is, 
it kind of means you can't do much. And a lot of my go-to games are just not really an option. So for instance, the graphical problems start with something like Need for Speed Special Edition here, which just is graphically corrupted. Ubisoft's pod refuses to even install due to the lack of RAM. 10 is the minimum, and this computer only has eight. Age of Empires, same thing. It needs 16 megs minimum. We're only halfway there. Jazz Jackrabbit 2 gives a similar effect of graphical nonsense as Need for Speed does. It's just garbage. Even Quake won't start, the DOS version at least, instead crashing with a general protection fault. Clearly, we need to just use some soft RAM. Double your memory. Yeah, just download more RAM. Why not? Uh, infamous scam there. Anyway, no. Um, so we're just going to be sticking to uh, some games that it actually can play, like The Oregon Trail 2. Yeah, dude. Hmm. Already at a river, huh? Let's just ford it. Oh, tragedy struck. Clean it up. We lost a whole bunch of things. 38 pounds of bacon, gone. So, uh, yeah, this kind of thing is... <laughs> oh, man. Brings back memories, you know, playing on just your, your bargain kind of computers. You could do all kinds of things to upgrade this. Double, triple, quadruple the RAM. I think it sports up to 128 megs. Obviously, that'd make a big difference and lighten up the swap file and hard disk usage going crazy every time you try to do anything. But no, I'm gonna leave it as is. I don't have too many computers of this um, low spec. <laughs> like I said, it brings back some oddly specific memories of just like playing stuff on whatever you had and you dealt with it. You know, 100 megahertz Pentium is fine. You could drop a bunch of other things in there though. Add cache, an L2 cache slot is there. And of course, um, let's try to forward again. There's the video memory as well. There's only one megabyte on board and there's those, those sockets where you can double to two, but even then, you know, that's not gonna make this thing scream. But, oh no! Well, I guess my uh, trail goers will live to see another day. <laughs> uh, another that is of course gonna be just fine on here is Raptor. Classic DOS shareware game, Call of the Shadows. Yeah, I get to hear some of that interesting ESS FM synth as well. Uh, but yeah, if you just sort of think about this as like a, you know, less, <laughs> less a Pentium Windows 95 kind of computer, which it is, but think about it more as just a fast-ish, 486. And yeah, I mean, it's perfectly capable in that sense. DOS games, especially those like pre-96. <laughs> There's a whole bunch there to play with and it'll pretty much all run just fine. This game is awesome. <laughs> We go. Well, anyway, um, yeah, in terms of uh, DOS stuff, it's, it's pretty darn capable, like I said. And, you know, the fact that it is just so compatible in terms of the sound chip is great. I mean, it's already set to pretty much what everything is gonna look for. Sound Blaster, ad-lib compatible for music, and the Sound Blaster is just your standard 225.1 kind of settings. It just thinks it's a Sound Blaster. Naturally, this also means Duke 3D is a fine choice. Well, you know, <laughs> maybe it's not such a great choice. It's about the laggiest I've seen that introduction ever. Okay. Oh, that, this poor lack of RAM. That swap file. The hard disk and just everything conspiring against it. I'm sure once it gets things... Uh, 
loaded that it's probably gonna be okay. <laughs> oh dear. Even choppy, I can still kick butt. <laughs> oh boy, interesting dips and spikes in performance. Anytime it's trying to like bring in new monsters or sound effects, that's when it starts to, <laughs> to really chug. I feel you, Duke. This is sad. Oh! Um, wow. All right. Well, never mind. I mean, it, it is playable, but let's put this up to like 32. All right, restarted. Let's see how this goes. Well. Uh, it might be nominally better. Let's say it's nominally better. Yeah, it's definitely improved, I guess. I don't know, it's hard to tell. Things loaded into virtual memory, maybe. Uh, obviously, it would also be improved with um, more of the L2 cache or just you know, that module being installed at all. Like I said, it's fascinating going back to this kind of experience because honestly you forget with uh, like every other DOS machine I have is just so upgraded and optimized for one thing or another that it's like, you know, sort of the peak of what it would have been back in the day. Whereas this is just the lower middle ground, <laughs> middle of the road kind of thing. And uh, yeah, on that note, how about Quake? All right, Quake is a good test. Like I said, the uh, DOS version wouldn't work at all for whatever reason. Windquake, on the other hand, ah, uh, yeah. Well, here we go. All right. Well, <laughs> here's Quake, such as it is. We're on a 100 megahertz Pentium with eight megs of RAM and one megabyte integrated graphics chip. Yeah. <laughs> Another one of those where uh, once things load for the first time, assets and all that, it does get smoother. Honestly, pretty playable, all things considered. Uh, at least when there's only like one enemy in a small room. You know. Not the worst I've seen, but <laughs> not the best by any means for 1996, late 95, whatever. Definitely one of those machines that kind of just exemplifies, you know, it's, it's obsolete by the time you get it out of the parking lot and put it into your car to take home. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. It's holding up a little better than I thought it would. Yeah, those groups of dudes here at the end always make this chug, but not as much chugging as I thought. Honestly. <laughs> Duke 3D felt uh, more inconsistent. And because this is from the era that it is the original Tomb Raider for DOS. Heck yeah, the interlaced video. <laughs> Streaming straight off of the CD, putting that quad speed drive to work, all four of those X's doing their thing. FMV.
All right, let's get to the game. See those polygons in all their glory. There we go. You can count those pixels. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, another one that's um, playable, but perhaps not the most. Uh, well, I don't know. It's accurate to the time. Let's just put it that way. If you didn't have any kind of uh, gaming powerhouse computer, then this is probably how you played it. That's not the right button. Reminds me of going to like a friend of a friend's place and they had this going and it ran like crap, didn't care, thought it looked amazing. You know, way beyond anything I could do on my Packard Bell 486. So yeah, whatever. Performance, I didn't really know what that was. Oh yeah, let's get into those single digit frames. <laughs> well, anyway, gaming in 1996. Uh, yeah, this is, this is pretty accurate, for better or worse. And I think that is valuable in its own way, having a computer around that is very much representative of what a bunch of people had. I admit, a lot of my enjoyment revisiting old computers is to experience the things that I never did, or very rarely did. You know, the really costly, high-performance, specialized stuff. Rigs that I could only dream of, that kind of thing. However, there's definitely some increasing value that I'm finding in uh, the stuff that is undervalued. Especially when it's in basically like new condition. I'm still a little bummed it's missing uh, some of the things that it was supposed to come with, and it has definitely been used when exactly new as I was sold, but whatever, man. It's uh, really a treat to go back and experience this kind of thing again, because it really is kind of rare these days that I actually go back to try out and play with a computer that was slow even when it came out. Like I said, that's kind of the stuff that I was more familiar with and used more often back then. A computer that was impressive for the fact that it was a computer, <laughs> not because it was the fastest or any kind of uh, performant, really. It would just, you know, it had multimedia capabilities, a CD-ROM drive, a sound card. Wow, Pentium? That's nuts. Doesn't matter that all this stuff was middle of the road or lower, uh, just was what it was. A computer, and that alone was exciting, for a time anyway, as a kid. You, of course, run into limitations when you try to push much beyond 1996, especially with that little amount of RAM that it has in there. That's probably one thing that I, I will upgrade just a tad. At least get it to 16 so it can have the option of running some stuff from 97. Anyway, yeah, that's about it for this video. And I hope that you enjoyed seeing it all come together and revisiting that 1995-96 Windows PC vibe. And if you did enjoy this, then awesome. Perhaps you'd like to check out some of my other videos looking at all kinds of computers from the 90s and such. And stick around, there's other things always in the works here on LGR. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>